California by Selena Sandvik. I think that's what her name is. California, your salty flowers have curled. My hair, there I found the key of the world that made a woman out of a girl. Dancing, I looked straight into your flaming heart of pearl. Dad, Mom, it's all true. Watch me leave through the fiery gate of the stage where I find my fate and my songs turn the crowd mad. Miss, they shout ardently, you are beautiful. How earnestly you scare me, I say lying. Give me more of this champagne, the sparkling wine that makes me sing, like a nightingale, at least free to fly. San Francisco, my skin whitens under your flashes. Let me sing your echo, Los Angeles. Lead me to heaven among your angels. Pour in my glass diamonds and honey. Give me the crowd almighty. Take, take like a drink of silver for my foreign lips still bitter. Nothing is too much. Nothing is like that touch. I know this is not heaven. Give me the angels. Give me the crowd. Give me the crowd. I guess that was a song that she wrote. That's my guess. The stain left no doubt on its murderous origin. There's a hat. Man's hat. I was hoping not to meet him. Is that a person? Oh, I guess not. An empty head devoid of memories. I felt close to that doll. It's like um, one of those mannequin things that you put wigs on. Ooh. Save point, save point, yay, save point. I'm not going to check you yet because I got stuff to look at. From Selena to William Xer 5. I will always remember 1936 as the year I discovered the jazz clubs in Harlem. The savory ballroom, the radium club, the log cabin, the cotton club, the theatrical grill with Ellington, Henderson, Calloway, Armstrong. But even though I date a colored man, I'm not one of them. She dated a colored man? Okay, 1920s? I guess that would make a little bit of sense. Huh. In America, white people still hang African Americans. Roosevelt and the New Deal won't change a thing, William, because your country still tries to cure an imaginary disease by mutilating itself. One night, Jim encourages me to get on the stage. I am drunk and sad, so I sing a stev, a folk song from home, the same song I sang for you last time. But I improvise around the theme in a very jazzy way. After I stop, there is silence. I am about to collapse. I feel dizzy. And suddenly the crowd bursts into applause. And they go on cheering me as if they will never stop. It's because of that song that I am nicknamed the Little Northern Star by Armstrong. Dear old Louie, so far away today. Well, I guess she had, a, she had a couple colored friends that like helped her on her way. These books were covering the modern evolutions of fashion. And I say that in a very nice way, not offensive. So many women on these walls, among them I could see Selena. There are many women portraits on the walls of that room. Many photographs looked old. Women of the family, maybe? I do not know. The Vesper family was strongly bound to the textile world. The fucking light went out. Fucking stay on. I am afraid of the dark. <laughs> Especially in this game. There's a door. Oh! Camera. Ooh. A lot of women. The bottom left picture is like limbs and the limbs have fucking marks on like their ankles and shit the one in the far right has blood near her and her eyes are watery something tells me these girls all died every single one of them Vesper family strongly bound to the textile world. I think I'm gonna pick up matches. And save my game. Fuck! Why 
Why does this go out the moment you leave the frickin' room? You ever notice that? Alright. Save it. So I'm gonna guess that this was maybe Selena's room or a place that she stayed. I still don't really know if she lived here or what. But... We will find out, I guess. This is a very creepy hallway. These brand new science books had just arrived from Germany. There's a book. William Vesper's Diary, Excerpt 6, November 21st, 1929. Tonight I again woke up with a start. It felt like there was a weight on my chest. The shadow seemed to condense more and more because of the hatred. Her hatred, that wrench will never leave me in place. Peace, peace. I tried to turn on the light, but the fuses tripped once again. As I was reaching for the matchbox I keep under my pillow, I felt, dear God, I felt the tip of her nails on my arm. I screamed and fell out of bed. Then I remembered the matches I keep in the pocket of my pajamas. You really shouldn't sleep with matches. As the darkness that were lurking below the bed started crawling along my legs, I scratched the match as it felt if the room started to inflate, returning to its original size. I couldn't sleep anymore. I went to town. Once again, I had to do something, but these moments of peace are getting shorter and shorter. Hmm. So he's experiencing the same shadows and darkness and ghosts and stuff that we are. And it's very scary. Oh, another picture. August 28th, 1904, a new Vesper on Earth. William, my son, I want to be your pride. Vesper's legacy, a gift from the past. Elected best company. Oh, that's from below. So this is... He's a cute little baby. I don't know about the other picture. The other picture's kind of weird, how it's just half of his face. I don't know why anyone would want to take a picture of that, but... Seems like there should be a light here. Because there's lanterns. Not lanterns, but lights. There's a door with scratch marks on it. That's, oh god, I can go in it. Oh god. I don't think I want to go in there yet. I would love to find a switch. Impressive collection of astronomy books. A box full of hair. A shiver went down my spine. Was it a collection? Ew. <sighs> William Vesper's Diary, Excerpt 17. May 16th, 1928. Mother's birthday was yesterday. She harassed me all night. Her insect-like voice and insults drove me crazy. Then, as I was sleeping, the beating, the scratching. Where were you, Luna? You have been gone for nights. I jumped out of bed, took the car. In town, I saw that lonely girl stumbling on the sidewalk. Her hair was black, a color I abhor. I opened the car door. She was drunk and chilled to the bone and got in. The knife was beneath my seat, so I didn't have the strength to do it. So I brought her back here. As I write this, she is tied in mother's favorite seat. Fear has made her dirty it already. Oh. I don't know where to start. After putting on my mask in a suitable outfit, I started cutting her forearms and thighs. Blood flowed. I felt nauseous and walked out to puke. It wasn't enough. Luna didn't react. Meanwhile, Mother and the Choir of Shadows kept mocking at my defeat. Wicked child, shame to your blood. Bullshit. I will show you. Is William fucking crazy? He just picked up a drunk girl on the sidewalk who might have been a prostitute, honestly, from the other stories, and is trying to kill her because his dead mother is mocking her? I'm very confused. Oh. No! No! Are you fucking kidding me? Jesus Christ, don't do that. This is locked. 
Is there not a fucking light switch anywhere around here? There's got to be a light switch somewhere. I don't want to go too far down. see what's here because I think the stairs are out here. Where am I going? Oh boy. Matches! Thank you god there's matches. Another picture. Henry Vesper, October 15th, 1874 to August 26th, 1913. Peace, finally. So there's Henry Vesper. Okay, so this is just the other side. Oh, there's a ghost right frickin' there. Alright, I'm gone! Oh boy. Whew. Alright, I guess I'll finally enter this room. I don't know why there's bugs in here. I don't like it though. Someone wrote a final letter and then came to the dust. Oh god, there's like fucking souvenirs from trips to African countries. Is that a candle in the middle? Please tell me that's a candle in the middle. No? Yes? All the candles in here burnt out long ago. Great. What's this? Margaret's Diary, excerpt 16. June 3rd, 1913. I haven't entered his room since the first attack. Today I went to visit Henry after my prayer. I expected to find him broken down, wrapped in the stench of death. On the opposite, he looked peaceful, and the room was clean. The servants were taking care of him like a child. When I asked him how he felt, he laughed. You are a dark son, Margaret. You being here doesn't bade well. I offered him to pray with me, to share what he had on his heart. He answered, you can't share anything with a locked chest. God is open for you, I told him. I'm only his vessel. He started reciting the Bible. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. Then he added, this is what the world is to me now. It also says that the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. I tried. He laughed. Who are you, you who are filled with his spirit every day? Look at you and tell me it's not poisoned. I left him. His soul is dead. His body will soon follow. Marriage problems? Maybe? Oh, another, another picture. Is that Cthulhu? That looks like Cthulhu. That's scary. Oh god. Jesus Christ. I don't know if I wanna. Some employees of Vesper Textiles honor their trust, William. Can I light this? No, I could read this though. Fall of Vesper, June 6, 1938. A landmark of Boston, Vesper had managed to navigate the waters of a collapsing economy without harm, and people thought they were made to stand the test of time. Yet today, as the American industry is recovering under the New Deal set by Mr. Roosevelt, only one hardly overlooked the signs of plummeting Vesper. Job cuts, failed deliveries, board members' resignations, unjustified foreign investments. The company seems to be falling on itself, and many long-term employees are starting to worry. As of today, William Vesper, heir and current CEO, still refuses to comment on the situation. Let us hope this is only a temporary slump. Ah. <sighs> So the company ended up falling to the Great Depression after everyone thought it wouldn't, I guess. Oh, there's something in the bed. Wardrobe door didn't even move. All the candles in here had burnt long ago. Oh boy. 
There is somebody in the bed. A child drawing with the word dad. That body was Henry Vespers. So that's why there's all these bugs in here. That's why. Oh. Oh, shit! There was someone standing on the edge of the bed. I don't know if you saw that. June 1913. This is Henry Vesper, last note. This is June, but I can't tell which day it is. I'm not only losing my mind, I'm losing my memory as well. My father left me two things, one of his biggest companies in Boston, and this disease that corrupts my blood weakens me and keeps me away from my family. When I come out of those manic episodes, I am feeling completely exhausted and convinced that it is only a short break before the next one. What really breaks my heart is that William sees me in the state, despite all my efforts to spare him the worst of it. His affection for me hasn't changed, and I love him even more for that. As for Margaret, she finds me disgusting and makes no efforts to hide it from others. She's not a wife. She's not a mother. She's a wolf, only waiting to tear you to pieces the moment you fall to your knees. I'll fight to the end, just to show her. Bravery is not the result of a strict education, nor the legacy of a long-lost glorious past. Bravery is facing hardships while remaining true to yourself. And I'm not lacking in that matter. I hope William figured it as well. So... This is when William was a kid. And his mom was... Uh, I guess, like, a horrible person. And... Henry knew that. Henry died knowing this. And then... William tried to do better than his mom? I don't know. It doesn't seem like the wife killed the husband, but I, I've, I have no idea what's going on. This is, this is so broken and I don't want to exit this because because that. Okay, time to run. See ya. Bye. Oh god. Oh god, you can stay right there. That's fine with me. Whew, okay. I'm gonna go save. Alright. Oh, just in time, too. Alright. Okay, so... That's that. I think I have some stuff to read in my... Maybe. Maybe not. I don't think so. Alright, cool. Are you still here, Selena? You're gone, and then the candle just immediately goes out. As soon as I walk away from it. Oh, but you're... So you're here when the light's here. Okay. You're, st you're still looking? Okay. It's weird how she has eyeballs and she's dead. Okay. Uh. Yeah, I'm gonna try to get something for you, I guess. I don't know. Maybe. Hello? I guess I could try this door. Fuck. I'm in the bathroom, but there's matches. So that's a good thing. Sweet. Alright. Okay, time to shit your pants. The toilets were out of commission, but the owner didn't seem to mind. Open doors were a rare commodity lately. Anything back here? No. Anything over here? Letter from Dr. Rosenthal. Dear Margaret, I cannot come every day to treat your husband's seizures. As I told you, they are unavoidable at this stage of the disease and they will get worse. I fully understand your worries considering the responsibilities of your husband in the Vesper business, which is why I urge you to get ready for the worst. Henry refuses to be sent to the hospital, enjoying his family and his home as part of his last will. Let me clear all doubts once and for all. Syphilis is not a hereditary condition passed on through genes, but from a mother to child through the placental barrier. 
In other words, it doesn't cross generations. So we had syphilis. Syphilis killed your father, but you are healthy and sound. Your son is healthy and sound as well. This idea of inherited con congenital dementia is an obsession, an intellectual construct, nothing more. You are obviously exhausted. You should take some rest. Dr. Rosenthal. So she thought she was sick because of her husband, and she thought her kid was sick too? I don't freaking know. This is weird. A map of the second floor. One problem settled. Sweet. Finding the plan to the second floor was like having another fragment of the mystery setting in place. Cool. The smell of the woods outside was an unbearable temptation. All right. So, the bathroom, everybody. All right. Oh, yeah, that's the door that's locked, right? Yeah. All right. Oh, God. I hate the dark. There's a door here. That's doors locked as well. Okay. Oh boy. <gasps> Hi! Some untouched food. Someone ate here recently. Uh. Uh. I'm gonna go over here. William Vesper's Diary Excerpt 18, May 19th, 1928. I was studying in. A Merindian ritual sacrifice when the fuses tripped. I was grabbed and thrown to the ground by shadows, dragged to the storeroom. I managed to toggle a switch. Electricity saved me. Enraged, I grabbed the knife and the mask. I returned to the girl. I sat on her to prevent her from moving and stabbed her by following my instincts straight into her belly. That sacred matrix. Her white skin was like a moon reddening more and more with each new scar. Then I saw higher art in the making. The work turning from white, the, alchem the alchemical albedo to robedo, the red work that concludes the magnum opus. It all made sense. Life, death, the transmutation of matter, and the active tincture of the philosopher's elixir was leaking over me. Intoxicated, I poured her blood to the last drop and bathed in that body as I witnessed life flowing away from it. When I turned back, Luna's silvery eye had returned and was watching us from behind the window. The shadows were silent. I think I am free. Blood spoke. I found a way to quiet the night. Whoa. This has to do with, like, sacrifices, alchemy, murdering. I don't know the logic behind this, but... William went crazy. Uh... Hello? <gasps> oh, God! I couldn't move. He just turned around. Um. Saving. What was that place? Something was off. What is this place? What am I doing? What do I do? I have no matches. Oh. This room was different. It was a dead space. A breach opened in the night. A world trying to mimic another. Memories, maybe. Suppressed memories. Sadness. Oh boy. Letting myself fall into a trap was starting to be a bad habit. Okay. Okay, I read that already. Let's go. Turn around, run. Where are you? I was feeling dizzier and dizzier. I had to go out as soon as possible. Okay. Now where? Guide me, light! What am I doing? What am I doing? Where am I going? Okay, 
there we go. Oh shit! Woo! Am I playing the piano? Yes, I am. Hi, Selena. You're drinking. Don't drink. Don't be drunk. Follow me. Okay. Can do. But you just. Oh, shit. Okay. A coffin. Rest in peace. Was that what she wanted? Such a waste. Okay, I thought that was a key that's actually just chains. It's okay. It's fine. It's over here. Oh, shit. Uh oh. Uh oh. Where am I? I don't know where I am. I'm gonna die. Oh crap. Yeah, I died. I went like way past where I was supposed to go. Fuck. Alright. 